I lived in death for 10 days. After almost six months, it was time to leave the spinal ward. I had no feeling from the waist down. I wanted my life back. I wanted to put my running shoes on and run out the door, but I couldn't. At home, sitting outside in my plaster body cast, an aeroplane flew over my house. And in that moment, my eyes and my mind were open. I stopped asking, why me? And I began to ask, why not me? And I looked up and I thought, well, that's it. If I can't walk, then I might as well fly. So weeks later, my mom and my friend Chris, they bought me a pair of baggy overalls and they drove me to the local airport, Bankstown Airport, and they carried me in. And I held onto the counter because I couldn't even stand on my own. I said, I'm here for my flying lesson. And they ran out the back to draw short straws. Oh my God. And this guy came out, Andrew. He said, hi, I'm gonna take you flying. I said, great. So they put me in the car and they drove me down to the tarmac. And there on the tarmac was a red, white and blue aeroplane. I had never seen anything so beautiful before. They lifted me up into the aircraft. They put me in the front seat. They did my seatbelt up. He got a clearance from the tower and he took off down the runway. And as the wheels lifted off the runway, I felt the most incredible sense of freedom. And then as we flew over the training area at Bankstown Airport, Andrew said to me, he said, right, you see those mountains over there? And I said, yes, as I looked towards the Blue Mountains west of Sydney, where my journey had begun. And he said, you take the controls and you head towards those mountains. And I did. And I was flying. And I knew right then that I was gonna be a pilot. I didn't know how on earth I'd ever pass a medical, <laughs> but that didn't matter because I had a dream and nothing was going to stop me. And I practiced my walking as much as I could. And I went from the point of two people holding me up to one person holding me up to the point where I could walk around the house holding onto the furniture as long as it wasn't too far apart. So while the doctors continued to put my body back together again, I went on with my theory study. And then amazingly, eventually, I passed my pilot's medical and eventually, I learned to fly. I went for my first solo and I got my private pilot's license. And then I learned to navigate. I flew around Australia and I got my unrestricted private pilot's license. And then I learned to fly in bad weather as well as fine weather and I got my instrument rating. And then I got my commercial pilot's license. And then I got my instructor rating. And then I found myself at that same school where I'd gone for that very first flight teaching other people how to fly. In just over 12 months after I'd left the spinal ward. <laughs> I wasn't meant to live, I wasn't meant to walk, and I wasn't meant to fly. Our bodies may be limited, but it's our spirit that's unstoppable. I now know that it wasn't until I let go of who I thought I was that I had the freedom to create something completely new for my life. It wasn't until I let go of the life I thought I was supposed to have, that I'd worked so hard for, that I was able to embrace the possibilities that waited for me. I now know that my real strength never came from my body. Unlike anything you can lose in life, the defiant human spirit remains steadfast. And of this I'm certain, I am not my body. And you, my dear friends, are not yours.
when you choose courage in the face of fear. You defy the things that hold you back from greatness. It's a daunting task. And you might well ask, where do I begin? Where do I start? Well, perhaps the simple words of this poem might offer a clue. He said to build a better world. I said I would, but how? The world is such a cold, dark place and complicated now. For I am small and helpless. There's nothing I can do. He said, of course there is. Just build a better you.